Hey, it's the official podcast back in better than ever. It's also a historic moment for it because it's our first mukbang podcast. I'm eating mac and cheese. What about you boys? Hmm. Ooh. I haven't had that I'm while. eating up the fact that Jackson's back. Hi, Jackson. Hey guys, back yeah, here hey. again with the official podcast. Not with mac and cheese though. Didn't know we were doing mukbangs. Must have missed that meeting last week. So that's that's a shame. Really could have eaten if I really wanted to. That that would have been nice to know. Should have alerted me. But other than that, just happy to be here. Glad you're happy to be here, Jackson. Why mac and cheese? Yeah. Out of all the things you could have chosen, I just didn't have anything else. So. <laughs> One of the most mouth noisy foods there is. <laughs> yeah. Well, which is why it's such a historic moment. It's like the best <laughs> ASMR mukbang you can get. Oh yeah, that's what people tune in for. Yeah, is it homemade mac and cheese or is it like those uh you know two dollar frozen meals from the grocery store? No, it's it's homemade. It's my mom's mac and cheese. Oh, well, that's that's very sweet. Way to, way to take yeah, it in it a wholesome direction this week, Charlie. I really appreciate that. Let's uh, mm-hmm. let's continue on with the wholesome uh, theme and start talking about foot fetishes. Does that sound good to you guys? You guys, <laughs> you guys yes, into feet? Yeah, I should, oh, I, should, I should have said like soulsome or something like foot souls. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, uh, that's cute. Yeah, uh, you guys hear about the, I think this happened last week, and you guys may have talked about it. I didn't watch last week's episode, so I'm not sure. But did you guys hear about the Chugga Conroy drama? I'm sure you have, right? I heard about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we saved it for you, actually, because Kaya mentioned that you'd been really into it, so we waited. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You were the number one Chugga Conroy fan. You always said that on every episode. I had never heard about Chugga Ch- Conroy until this moment. I didn't know he was... He's he's apparently like a big YouTuber, like two million subs. There's... N- Wait, there's no way you'd never heard of him before. No, he haven't. was like one of the first Let's Players. Like, he was, he was like the progenitor of Let's Plays from way back in the day. Is it like a Minecraft YouTuber? No, he's just like a general let's player. All right, well, regardless, no, no diss on his uh, like reputation or anything. I'm sure he's a very big YouTuber. I've just never run, run in the same circles as him. Didn't watch his content or anything like that, so I didn't know anything about him. Well, you don't have feet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know anything about him up until this point. And how how this whole drama situation broke was kind of funny. Uh, have you guys seen the subreddit? I think it's like r slash YouTube drama. It's one of those like subreddits like, <laughs> yeah. based around YouTube drama. <laughs> like just the, a bunch of fucking losers talking about you. Well, so are we now technically, but they they go hard on it. What were you gonna say? I was going to say, I saw that unfold in real time, but it's the, it's a huge difference. Usually if there's like some kind of YouTube drama, there's like a post like, I can't sleep. I can't watch YouTubers anymore without feeling guilty because there might be something behind this. So they like, they get like personally really invested oh, in yeah. it to like an unhealthy degree. <laughs> You'd think they'd learn after maybe like the 10th YouTuber that they follow has been like outed. My favorite comment on one of the threads that you sent me, Jackson, was so the person initially dumped a bunch of DMs on Twitter and the Reddit comments were like, oh man, who's this going to turn out to be? I really hope it's not Chugga. And then the follow up comment, sigh, it is Chugga. (laughs) (laughs) They have their whole days ruined by like a YouTube (laughs) drama, like personally. I really don't, I can't think of a, I mean, there's maybe a couple, like a a few actors out there that I'd be like, oh damn, that sucks. But I don't think I would be so fucking hurt to the extent that these people are or anyone is over like a YouTuber being added as like something like this. It wouldn't like affect me too much. Like it would be like, shit, that guy guy sucks. It's just, it's just one of those things that's like disappointing. But like on, on that subreddit, I've seen a couple of threads go up where it's like, I really need something to cheer me up. I haven't been able to sleep well the last couple of days or like my mood's been really down since <laughs> learning about the Chugga Conroy situation. Like it's really unhealthy to be that personally invested in yeah, someone, sure. a complete but stranger. Even, even disappointment. Like I feel like that, I feel like I have to be so em- emotionally invested in someone to feel disappointment. Like I'm just kind of like so That's emotionally cool. detached from the people that I pr- like consume content from. Not that disappointment, I just but like bitter taste like even when you watch will smith's good movies now in the back of my head all i can think is cuck what a fucking loser this isn't as cool as it used to be to watch (laughs) and maybe that's how people feel now about chugga conroy 
this oh this guy he licks feet it shoot. all depends on how much you can separate the art from the artist for some people yeah. they don't give a shit other people that's a whole big reason they watch it you know that's well, true yeah, true, yeah, but at the at the same like, hmm. okay. So if it was like a artist that I really enjoyed the art of, um, if if stuff did come out about them, I would still view their art differently from that point forward. So I'm not entirely separating the art from the artist. I don't think it's just like I don't put much, um, what what's it called like, ethical importance on wait, uh, yeah, wait. I guess on on the people who create the art. Because I don't know them, you know, I, I'm not setting myself up to be disappointed in that way, because I don't know them, and it's most yeah, likely that they're like that. flawed people. It's also different kinds of art, like Chuka Conroy. No one's watching him for just the gameplay; they're watching him because they like personality. Him. So it's like yeah. the yeah. artist is who they're appreciating, as opposed to the art he's making. So I, I understand being disappointed. It's just I don't understand like losing sleep over it. Yeah. It yeah, depends highly <clears throat> on how parasocial your content is, you know? It's part of the Okay, hang on. Let's get to the meat of this, Jackson. Oh, true. Give us a rundown from the top. I wanted to uh, set the scene first. Uh, so, Jackson just okay. read the preamble. He's got seven <laughs> more articles of consternation against this. Let him go. Let him read. How this whole uh, thing broke was just super funny to me. Um, it started with the people on that subreddit. They made a thread basically going uh, alright, there's been there's been a few cancellations in the last few weeks. Let's reset and talk about YouTubers we love and who, who we know would never do anything wrong. And people were just in that thread being like, oh, Chugga Conroy is so fucking great. We all love Chugga Conroy. <laughs> this is like a, basically a Chugga Con Conroy uh subreddit now like they they loved him in that sub that subreddit and thread before this whole thing broke so they were just like hyping this dude up in this thread and then like literally the next day uh, i think their name is emily on twitter posted a, a vague tweet saying something to the extent of so about that uh thread in that subreddit uh, the person who abused me for years is constantly quoted in that thread and then this sent the whole subreddit into overdrive, like trying to figure out who it was, because there are a bunch of other names in there other than just Chugga Conroy. And I think the lead mod of that sub was like the biggest Chugga Conroy <laughs> fanboy ever. And he's like, God, I hope it's. I think that's the tweet that you saw, Kai, uh, the the comment that you saw, Kai, where it's like, God, I hope it's not Chugga Conroy. And then five minutes later, it's Chugga Conroy. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> and yeah, so Emily uh, posted about how. Chugga Conroy kind of like sexually harassed her or sexually coerced her into uncomfortable conversations over a, a set amount of time uh, through Discord and stuff like that. And what the harassment boils down to is these very weird text messages of erotic role play to do with feet. And it is the most like early 2010, like asterisk conversation, Tumblr tier stuff ever that I think I've, I've seen in a long time. It is, it would almost, it would almost be funny if it wasn't like extremely uncomfortable at the same time. Have you guys seen on discord where it was taking place, right? Yeah. The, the conversations were taking place on discord. Have you guys actually seen the conversations or have you been blind? I was actually waiting for you. I saw a I saw yeah. bits and pieces Spazies. of it floating around Twitter, but I was waiting for you. All right, um, Kai. While I read some of these out, can you post these pictures in in the uh, official Discord, the ones that I put in in your chat? I am on it. I sent it earlier. Oh, oh Jesus! I think somebody already did. Oh, perfect. Oh, as long as it's our server chat. As long as it, okay. So I'll, I'll read no, through. No, no. Actually, do you want to read it with me, Kyle? The, the first picture in our group chat. I can't do both. Just, just this Pick one. one. Yes. Just one. Just uh, one. Read one? through. Read through. All right. So you, you can be the foot fetishist. I'll be Emily. That's fine. Uh, okay. what, the, just the very first chat yeah, log. Yeah, the very here. first chat log. From Discord? Yeah. All right. This is from 2023 in September, it looks like. And he says <clears throat> to this person, it's natural that you don't. Your best one day is not your best every day. And that is okay. And then Great Cheshire, which is the Emily person on Twitter, uh, replies saying, It is. I just have to weather through it. Get all my ducks in a row. So I, be I, I, believe, I believe they're talking about some kind of like trauma she's experienced and they're like kind of working through it at this point. It's just an in-depth conversation about something relating to Emily. 
Yeah, I'm sure Cheka has a solution here. Now in return, I'm going to need something from you. What's that? I think you know. With a whole bunch of ellipses as well, like super fucking dramatic. Emily replies saying, (laughs) Play Xenoblade 3? Not quite, smirks. And it's that role play like in italics. Cartoonishly attacks you as you sit there and tries to remove your shoes. Almost got him. (laughs) (laughs) He's cyber raping her. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Wait, how old is he here? Uh, this is this yeah, year. You didn't mention about like how old are he's they got, here I think he's general. at least 30. I'm not 100% sure because I think he was what, like... What year did this take place? This is in 2023. In messages, he's not 2023. No, there's, there's oh, no he, way. Didn't he? he? If this was last year, he was 32, 33. There we go. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that- <laughs> <laughs> That's, that puts it in a whole different light, hey? <laughs> this is a 32 year old man RPing <laughs> about feet. Yeah, I mean, for sure. If you told me that this was like a 13 year old's chat logs getting leaked, he'd be like, yeah, whatever. But 32 or 33. When what, you were mentioning it? Tumblr and all that, I thought you were saying this happened like 10 years ago or around that time, but. Okay, oh well, no. to, get a, <laughs> to get a bit ahead, this is the one that broke the. Uh, I don't know what the saying is. Camel's back. I don't know what the saying is. It broke the Straw dam. That broke the yeah, camel's yeah, back. That one. Uh, it, it's it's like, and then after this one, a lot of other reports came out about much more confronting things. Like there was a a person from, I think back in like 2013, who was 15 years old, who was groomed by him into the same kind of RP stuff while he was around 19. So this has been stuff that's been going on for like 10 plus years. Which is just fucking crazy. Emily uh, is of, shockingly is of age and stuff, so it's no, this isn't grooming to that degree, but it's still like very uncomfortable kind of forced sexual uh, conversation. You know, this is why sometimes they said the internet is forever because the other chat log from when he was nineteen, they pulled it up from Gaia Online chats, yeah, oh, which I didn't wow. even know was still a thing. They logged into Gaia Online and the chat was still there. On a server someplace to the point where this person was able to log in and pull up their conversations with this Chugga guy from 2010? I know, it's it's insane. Okay, so yeah, it, it would have been 2010. It would have been 13 freaking years ago. Yeah. He was 19. Gaia Online used to be the shit in 2010. I remember being on there and like doing art commissions for Gaia Bucks or whatever they had. <laughs> 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 It was a good time. You, you, you made money off uh, Gaia Online? Yeah. Wow. I made real money off Gaia Online. I, I would literally draw people's like personas for them in uh, Photoshop and Illustrator, and I would sell it to them basically. And then I would buy like whatever they had, like wing packs and hats, I guess, for your character. You should get into Roblox then. <clears throat> All right. Do you want to continue on with this next picture, picture two? Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So three days later, he says, "Same. I can't tell you how many games I played wrong all the way through." Emily says, and would just brute force my way through even if, even though it was hard as hell. So they're talking about video games right now. This is just to kind of show how he would like talk about normal stuff and then immediately veer into just weird territory. So continue on. All right. uh, That is some dedication to spending zero time menuing. But if you're not into it, I'd rather not waste your time. I might be into it. I just have to give it a chance again, especially once I figure out the combat a lot more. And also now that I do call myself a fangirl, having put so much time into it. Well, if you have any questions, I'm here. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to miss your shoes. It was kind of nice being their caretaker again. Looks at them in my hand. As hard as it was at times. They stunk horribly. <laughs> like that's genuinely just like so out of left field. There was no nothing leading <laughs> into know. that at all. <laughs> no amount of context could have made that made sense. Emily continues. Oh the yeah. One thing. I, sorry. I was going to say what I always find really fascinating when this kind of shit comes out is how quickly it goes from like a seemingly normal ish conversation to like and yeah also about like me jerking off like isn't that kind of cool or like whatever the fetish is. It just comes out of mm-hmm. nowhere. They, he, he can't help but insert it. it into everything. He, it's like a compulsion. 
Yeah, it's not just him. What I'm saying is it's just so fascinating how that's so common with all of this shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is most chat logs that Jackson and I read from the To Catch a Predator people as well as like just some preamble excuse to talk to the person. Like, oh, yeah, how was your day? Oh, you like video games? Anyway, will you touch my cock if I come by? <laughs> they immediately jump straight to it because they cannot con- uh, they can't control, control themselves. themselves. Yeah. It's they, probably the only reason he's talking to her in the first oh, place. Oh, 100%. And it's always, it's always yeah. they always think they're so subtle about it as well, but it is so incredibly obvious what they're trying to do. Uh, it, like, I guess the cum uh, fogs their brain or whatever, they get cum brain, and then they don't realize how mm-hmm. unsubtle they're being, but it, they can't help themselves. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, yeah. They stunk horribly. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> It is what it is. Man, big and stinky, you've got it all. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Girl's embarrassed. It is what it is. I have to live with how I am. That's sweet. Asterisk. Twirls your shoes around by the laces for about two seconds and abruptly throws them right at you. Here, catch! They hit you so hard you fall over backwards in your chair. What even? What even is the fetish? <laughs> Why is he doing her actions for her? That's breaking role play, play etiquette. How Why dare he? Why is he throwing the shoes at her like a bola? A, a catch. <laughs> My fucking shuriken boots. So what? One <clears throat> one thing you'll see. Does this repeated? person ever actually like? One thing you'll see repeated. One thing you'll see repeated. It's not just like a fetish for shoes or feet in general he really seems to enjoy this the smell the olfactory element of feet like he's constantly talking about how smelly they are mm-hmm. and stuff like that so mm-hmm. just, just big and stinky something and to take sweaty. note of yeah i was gonna ask does this person ever actually role play back like do any of the italics and pretend to be like larping with chugga or does is it just one-sided so I would have to assume there's maybe some role play back. A lot of these pictures are out of context. Like they've they've been um kind of they've been posted to her Twitter by her, so uh, you can't see the whole conversation anyway. Well, yeah, I assume there's some omissions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um but I the, I be- I believe that he has been inappropriate because there have been so many other people coming out with similar stories and pictures and stuff and talking about how they stopped talking to him because he he just wouldn't stop fucking bringing up like smelly feed and role playing like that and stuff like that and especially those old pictures from the guy online forums um like it's obvious that he's been doing this for like 10 plus years really so Hundred percent believe it. Even if she was playing a lot, even if she did play along anywhere, like I do believe that he's at fault here in general. Oh, I don't care at all. We can continue. Uh, dear Grat, but just know I'll never unsee or unsmell, for that matter. You'll have to be good to me and help me out when I need it, or I'll tell people. Oh, that didn't age well. Yeah, <laughs> you hear me. <laughs> he said he said you hear me like 30 minutes after the last message yeah. went unread by the way like it, there's no reply after the last thing and then 30 minutes later he says you hear me and then emily says i hear don't worry i'll be good good honks the rubber toe of your shoe we wouldn't want anything to happen to you hey sorry are oh. you free to talk you're not doing anything else <laughs> yeah, wait, that's so fucking <laughs> ominous <laughs> Honks the rubber toe of her shoe. Wait, do shoes honk? Are these like Skechers? <laughs> if she's, if she's like? wearing cloud shoes, maybe. This is how ordinary people act in real life. I can't believe that people are out there role playing with yeah. this kind of stuff. It is crazy that this is a thing. Well, like, they, always- this is what people do in real life. When they hang out with girls, they just honk their shoes and push the rubber toe and try to take them off and throw them at her. It's normal courtship. Do you think this this level of honking? This level of like uh, feet sexual diver- like interest existed before the internet, or do you think this exacerbated like yes. being terminally online? Like no, I know like foot fetishes like appreciating feet uh, existed before the internet, but do you think honking the rubber toe of your shoe <laughs> like that kind of fascination <laughs> is like an internet thing, or did that always exist? Well, I mean, 
You have to admit that I don't think before the internet we had the wiki feet or whatever that site is called, where they just keep track of celebrities' feet to goon off to. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it must have exacerbated it a bit. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, then in the rest of this one, it's kind of too long, but he plays it off and says that it's all just joke. He basically says, I'll continue this joke with you if you want. It just sort of happened. I got the vibe you were enjoying it if you were playing along. And I like doing this sort of thing. So I feel like we're on the same page there. But I guess due to just how it could be seen in hindsight, I want to tell you this was just a game. Just a prank, uh, he's bro. establishing an alibi for... <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just a prank. What does he bro. mean? What does he mean? I wasn't gooning at all. What does he mean? It just sort of <laughs> happened. He was the one that made it happen. I, I couldn't help myself. It just slipped out. I needed to honk those shoes. Like, what do you mean? You're the one that brought it up. I feel like it was suspicious that this would eventually get leaked to the public. He's oh, already yeah. like preemptively making excuses for it. Like, oh, by the way, you four podcasters reading this in the future, it was all just a gag. I don't, I don't like smelly feet. Look! Look at her! Look at her replies. Like she's not replying to most of the messages, and he's realizing, "Oh fuck, she's not as into this as I as I thought she would be." I've got to set up set up Plan B, make sure that she knows it's the game, and that this is I'm not being serious right now. It's a prank. Mm -hmm. I talked with my significant other about this when we started dating, and she told me I can talk about shoes with other people because it isn't sexual with my friends. Uh huh. It's just something I enjoy talking about with my friends, too. I, okay, just, he has an artistic interest in boots. Yeah. Um, in your stinky, stinky sandals. So, it, it continued, I think that was the end point, she was kind of getting weirded out by that point, and then she stopped replying, and he just constantly spammed her messages, just, just pinging her and, and continuing to spam her. But how it started was initially, like, he bought her a pair of shoes, to send her in and he ends up saying she she says it's it's great shoes i really appreciate it. thanks for thanks for the shoes and he replies by saying do i dot 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 get to see you in them question mark so he sent her a pair of shoes to <laughs> wear for for him and and like model for him it's so creepy it's so fucking creepy it's not sexual it's just friends being friends jackson yeah why yeah. don't you guys ever ask to see my shoes my big sweaty I, feet. I'll, I'll send you a, I'll send you a pair of shoes if you'll model them for me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. I'll take the free shoes. But make sure they get nice and stinky. Like, can you run a marathon in them and then send them back to Charlie? <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, what's the point? Make sure to really get that athlete's foot stink in there. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. So he was sending this person shoes and yeah. sniffing it and shit. And I guess at some point the person just got sick of this shit and said and cut him off, I guess, and stopped replying entirely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we have That's where the that ended. Gaia online chats. Is yeah. there anything spicy in the Gaia online ones? Oh, the Gaia online chats are just like an awful time capsule of what the internet like what conversations were like back in twenty ten between people. It is the most fucking Tumblr conversation I think I've ever read. He 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 says all right, so this is what the girl says. Uh, she says, I rape my songs, apparently. So yeah, they're talking about like what songs they listen to a lot on iTunes. And then he just starts screaming at her, I'm going to rape you. Sorry, cat guy quotes, whatever cat guy is. And then she says, would it really be rape now? Rape is unwilling, winky face. Sorry, me being a retard. And then he, it's just it's just conversation like that constantly. And she tells him that he's she's 15 and stuff and he doesn't care. And he talks about how he's a... He's a pedophile for liking her and stuff like that, and she jokes around with it as well. It, it was it was an awful read, honestly. It was just like so much random bullshit. I hated every second of it. And yet yeah. you kept reading. Well, you fucking animal, Jackson. It's fun. Yeah, well, I had to see how it ended. Are you interested in Chugger Conroy's thing. shoes now? In what? Are you interested in Chugger Conroy's shoes? Like, do you want his as a memento of all this? <laughs> yeah, I wonder what kind of state he's his feet and shoes are in. He he diverts attention to everyone else's shoes and feet. Now I want to know what he's hiding down there. <laughs> this is very quotable. Listen to this. <laughs> listen to this part. Chugger Conroy says, "So they're role playing a sex scene here. You're not gonna rape your boots off me, are you?" <laughs> Closes mouth, and then the girl replies, "What a lovely idea. Rapes the boots off. However, that works." 
And then he says, no, give me back my shoes. <laughs> this is the fantasy that somebody steals his what? shoes. Through rape? <laughs> it's so fucking I crazy. So. <laughs> They're all mine, bo ha ha ha. And so are you. Insert various inappropriate stuff here. It's, it's crazy. What the f- <laughs> He says, my feet are cold. Can I please have my shoes back? <laughs> that's part of it too it's a whole thing it's a cycle it's like it's like you know the cartoon superhero and supervillain they just go in an endless loop he's <laughs> gotta get the shoes, shoes back so he can lose them again it's he's, all a thing these feet just are gonna be along. so cold it's just like constant role play about shoes being stolen off their feet <laughs> he's, he's messaging people entire stories okay here's a short story from Chaga Conroy <clears throat> data 2022 so he's a grown ass adult here. The guard holding his nose replies, it, it seems to detect toxic chemicals on you, but it couldn't be, could it? <laughs> people in the line are shoving their way forward to the front. The people in the back, hearing the commotion, want a view of whatever's going on. Holy fuck, wh- what? Oh, oh, what a show! Damn, does it hurt having such enormous feet? <laughs> a small child shouts at you, hey lady, can I touch them for five dollars? And the crowd <laughs> oh. laughs. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is this guy's That problem? happens to me all the time when I go grocery shopping. There's a weird dude and he goes, does it hurt having such big feet? No, it was a small man that said that. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus Christ, Buster. What size shoes are those? Thirteens, brother? <laughs> Can I touch them? Inform the media. That man's got some real honkers. <laughs> oh my God. Them fucking floor slappers are huge. <laughs> Big feet, big feet. Read about it in the Chaga Conroy <laughs> Daily. 50 cents. <laughs> Wait, does so that really happen? I was kidding. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> was it, now, question for you, Jackson. I don't know if you saw this in your, your research. I didn't do much research. Was it ever known that he liked feet before these leaks? Like, had he, had he ever said anything in videos about liking feet to this degree? Or anything like that? Uh, I, saw like few, totally I saw a few, I saw a few, like, <laughs> vague comments that are played off as jokes in videos that people clipped like people went back and looked through all these videos once this kind of came out and there were a few comments just played off as jokes that now look bad in hindsight but like no he didn't have like a reputation as a as a foot fetishist or anything like that until this point okay hey, uh, okay can, let's read this one we were at some kind of, this is from chugger conroy and it's kind of like a continuation of the story that they were th- these two were talking about Kai just read. We were at some kind of party together as friends, but suddenly we're driven out of the house and the other party guests are chasing us like some angry mob. They're shouting that when they catch us, they're going to do terrible things. I shout as I run, run alongside you. Gah, what did you even do to piss them off this badly? And the person replies saying, I shrug my shoulders awkwardly as I try to keep up with you. Trade secret. Don't worry about it. A smug grin crosses my face as I recall the horrors that I may or may not have unleashed upon an unsuspecting crowd. And so it's it's the feet smell. It's the feet smells. I can guarantee you that's what they're talking about mm. there. Mm-hmm. They're constantly bringing mm-hmm. up feet smells. So this guy's just been role playing his entire life. He's been stuck in this role play uh, lifestyle for the last like at least 10, 15 yeah. years. He enjoys it a lot. A lot. Damn, since 2010 started all on Gaia. I'm, I guess so. I'm curious about your boy's perspective here. Do you think you could ever like get off to role play through text messages? No. Like in general, like with your significant no, other, like I just don't get it. It's not, mm, it's not hot. But this suddenly, I get hot, flirting, yeah. but I get yeah, flirting, flirting through text. But not like play. if you, oh no, no, that, um, that's totally different than role playing. Hmm. If yeah. you if you're like here's what I'm gonna do or oh here's what I find sexy then maybe but this kind of like oh and then the crowd gasps in horror as my stinky shoes fly away <laughs> like that's probably yeah. not anything no. involving asterisks just gives me an immediate ick like I feel I feel like sick inside. <laughs> It gets even worse now these days because you have those websites like character.ai where it's like, here's your robot girlfriend and you can roleplay with her. It's like, how do you jerk off to this shit? It's not even a human person anymore. At least when you roleplay with another human, that's like, whatever floats your boat, I guess. But if it's not even a real human anymore, how do you jerk off to that? Well, I I, 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 I believe they call it the Chugga Conroy... uh problem in mathematics where like he's he's fetishes and stuff 
are so out there that the only way that he's able to fulfill them is through role play. So maybe that's why, because he's talking about running through packs of crowds and like them smelling his feet and stuff like that. So like, there's no way to actually live that out. So it has to be reserved for role play. And that's the only way he's able to do it. Yeah, I guess. And it must be hitting all the girls, like the fangirls out of left field. It's like, imagine your favorite YouTuber is talking to you. Oh my God. Oh, we're going to have cyber sex. Oh, this is so naughty and hot. <laughs> feet. Ew, what do you mean stinky feet? <laughs> this isn't what I signed up for. They're, they're all, what? what uh? <laughs> Can we have normal cyber sex? Not this shit. <laughs> yeah. Then he sends you a pair of shoes and asks you to wear them for him. <laughs> <laughs> Put these sketchers on for me, babe. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, foot fetish in, in general is, like, a pretty harmless fetish as far as fetishes go. But to see it from a prominent YouTuber and in, to this degree, it's not like it's not just like a, like, harmless, like, oh, yeah, I like feet. I like touching feet. I like looking at feet or whatever. Feet feet just get me, you know? It's not that kind of thing. This is, like, a full-on lifestyle. Like, oh, he, he, he thinks about feet constantly. That's what is so funny about it to me. That's what elevates it, I think, above like most of the other controversies, YouTuber controversies that I've seen. This one was very unique and I enjoyed mm-hmm. it a lot. Mm-hmm. It was nice to hear about somebody enjoying stinky odors. You know <laughs> what I enjoy is good products. Mm. Oh, thank God. I do too. Oh, man. Perhaps to waft this odor out of the room, we should flood our rooms with the scent of mint. Mm. That's right. Delicious, yummy mint. Everyone loves smelling mint. And I liked to receive mint through my olfactory senses, as well as every sense, by signing up for Mint Mobile. Because it is a wireless plan that starts at just $15 a month with unlimited talk, text, and data. You can switch to Mint Mobile and tell those big phone companies, hey, I don't want to I don't want to engage in your disgustingly smelly stuff. You can have that. I would rather have a nice, fresh-smelling phone plan that's going to give you the best rate whether you're buying for yourself or your family. You get to use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep the same phone number as well as your existing contacts. You can switch to Mint Mobile and get the nation's largest 5G network at your fingertips. There's three, six, or 12-month plans to say goodbye to your monthly phone bill. Switch to Mint Mobile and get your first three months of premium wireless at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get it shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash official. That's mintmobile.com slash official. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash official. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Let's be real. Investing can be intimidating. So intimidating that sometimes it feels easier to just push it off. If you can identify with that, today's sponsor might be just the thing to kick you into gear. Today's episode is sponsored by Acorns. Acorns helps you automatically save and invest for your future. You don't need a lot of money to get started. You can even start by investing your spare change with Roundups. The app even gives you access to education and guidance to learn more about investing. So head to acorns.com slash official to sign up for Acorns to start saving and investing for your future today. Paid non-client endorsement may not be representative of all clients. Tier 1 compensation provided. Compensation provides an incentive to positively promote Acorns. View important disclosures at acorns.com slash official. Investing involves risk, including the loss of principal. Please consider your objectives, risk tolerance, and Acorns fees before investing. Acorns Advisors, LLC Acorns, is an SEC registered investment advisor. Brokerage services are provided to clients of Acorns by Acorn Securities, LLC. Member FINRA slash SIPC. For more information, visit acorns.com. Awesome. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Classic. Can we change the subject? I've had enough of smelly sneakers, please. Yeah, I mean, that was it anyway. But yeah, we can change the subject. It's time for my turn. My topic. And I tag in Jackson to talk about it as well. Jackson. And maybe, Charlie, I don't know if you've played it. Let's talk about Yakuza 8, or Like a Dragon 8, Infinite Wealth. 
Damn, I haven't got to start it yet. I'm starting it this week. Good. We're talking about just the beginning. Jackson, we've we've talked about this a little bit here and there. Yeah. But this game has unfortunately one of the most boring intros to a game I've ever seen. Oh no. Wait, you're such a huge yeah. Yakuza guy though. Wait, what makes I this know. one so boring to you? I know. It's so we talked about this a bit, and Jackson can weigh in, because he's further than I am. I'm still on chapter one. I've played three and a half hours, and I'm still on the first chapter. Jackson, you said you're on chapter five? Yeah, I'm about 18 hours in, and I'm on chapter five, yeah. Okay, so you can weigh in on if this changes soon, or gets any better. So, Yakuza Infinite Wealth, I keep calling it that, even though they've changed their name, yeah, whatever. Like so Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth is a direct sequel to uh, Yakuza 7. And it's a direct sequel to the story of 7. It's like, here's what happened after. Here's a few years after that conflict. Here's where all the characters are. So the problem is they really, really bank on your investment from that game to carry the beginning of the plot. The plot is very much, look at the characters and what they're doing, and here's how they're hanging out. And oh, two of them are going on a date, and it's so cute. But it's just a lot of, like, Japanese slice-of-life comedy, and it just keeps going and going and going and going. There's an introductory cutscene that sets up, like, a murder mystery plot, and it's really interesting. And then they drop it to just go... Oh no, Ichiban doesn't know how to go on a date with a woman. Yeah. That's really wacky. He's so awkward. That's really funny and cute. Ha ha ha. And it did make me laugh. It's it's funny every now and then. But when you compare it to the start that the previous game has, it's just way less interesting and way less exciting. And just... I, I'm not gonna lie. It's the fact I care about these characters already that's pulling me through. Otherwise, if it was like a new game... I don't know how much longer I'd play. Yeah, it. I don't know how I don't know how you would go into this as your first Yakuza game, uh, like without any kind of, I don't know, like you, relationship with the characters, uh, because like yeah. like you said, the entire like maybe first two hours is really predicated on you liking the characters. That's where you'll get your enjoyment from. Yes, these are established characters. Absolutely, they, it's exploring like, like you said, like pivotal life moments after the events of the last game with them and what they're doing and how they're acting and stuff like that. There's no real like driving plot point even a, a, until a, a probably. Yeah, there's really not. It's three it's hours in of life say. shit. You, yeah, you watch them drink at a bar. You watch them two of them date each other. You watch a guy go to work. And it, it's very much trying to do the slice of life thing where it's like, look at them, they're, they're characters you like and they're doing things, but it's just not interesting at all. And I think it's a huge step down because Yakuza 7 was a very good uh, soft reboot. You really can go into that one without having yeah. played any of the other games and still get a full, successful character-based story. With, you know, you'll miss details, and you won't know who previous characters are, but they do a very good job introducing a whole new cast and setting up this big government conspiracy plot and giving a huge emotional weight to everything, and it was excellent. Whereas with 8, you really need to have played 7 first. Otherwise, it's just watching a bunch of people you don't know doing shit that... Largely is not exciting. Seven, or seven anything at all. so seven pretty pretty much immediately starts getting the plot rolling. It does take a like there's a the first chapter there is also probably just as long. I think it's like two hours long of cutscenes in there, but the the plot gets rolling right. pretty pretty quickly still. Like things happen. Uh, whereas yeah, seven uh, in, infinite wealth. I think um, three hours in, I would say, is yeah. probably about when you start getting the actual plot impetus. Like the the big plot event happens that kicks off the game, which is just crazy to me. Like uh, I think one of the biggest criticisms that the Western market and and myself and I think Charlie have had about the Yakuza and uh, Judgment series has been like. They front load the story so hard in these games where you've got to sit through like maybe like three hours of cutscenes just to get to the game, really. Um, yeah, and and that's always been the main criticism of the games, and they went they went hard on that criticism in this game and ignored it and went like two times basically like they they doubled down they doubled down hard <laughs> they took they took that criticism Absolutely. and wiped their ass with it which is fucking so funny. Absolutely. The first three hours of Yakuza 7 are you're a low-level Yakuza doing debt collection, 
and you you know you beat up some thugs and you walk around the town and you learn the characters and you learn that there's a big conspiracy plot with your higher ups in the yakuza and it's like what's going on what wait that guy shouldn't be meeting with him they're enemies what's going like, and it's like you get interested it's slow but you're interested whereas in 8 the first bulk of the story is you're going on a date and you argue between two of your friends which outfit you should wear and what <laughs> restaurant you should eat at and it goes on and on and on and it is it is charming it is funny it's not just like incredibly boring and yeah. teeth grating but man for a yakuza game it is not yeah. the direction i like yeah. to see it's not a good start. it's like what are we doing here let's Damn. let's get it let's do something you know <laughs> i want to play the game Let's start the plot somewhere, not just like, hey, remember these guys? Watch them hang out. You know what I mean? I will say, now I had the same thoughts as you. Um, now that I'm 18 hours in and I've really gone into the kind of the meat of the game and the plot, I am enjoying it a lot more. I think that, it, that there is mm -hmm. a good story still here. Um, so once you get, once you eat your vegetables, um, the dessert tastes pretty good. So you'll enjoy it. Yeah, I, I am committed. I, I played seven, so I do have investment in the characters. I do know who they are and what's going on. And, you know, it's it's got me attached. I'm interested. But if this was a brand new franchise, I probably would have stopped playing by this point yeah. and just not even bothered. Yeah, I mean, it, it must be so, whatever. impossible to get, it, to get into. It's just such a such a big game. Yeah. Um, Charlie, did you did you even finish the previous game? Like a dragon? No. I can't remember what chapter I got to. I got decently far, and then I just didn't. It took so long mm. to get there, I think I just started playing other things. I also spent like seven hours on the um, the bi business building minigame. Oh, yeah. That's to, a great minigame. Fuck yeah. It's so fun. That minigame was amazing. There's so yeah, many I loved games. seven. I... I put like a hundred and something hours into seven and I loved it from start to finish. I beat the whole story, beat that mini game, beat all the side dungeons, did everything basically. Um, and I think that game is fucking phenomenal, but it is a slow burn and it is a long grind. Uh, and eight kind of worries me because it probably is the same thing, except the intro is not, not at all getting off to a good start. Yeah. Not at all. I think you. I think you'll we'll enjoy see. it if you enjoyed seven. I think you'll enjoy it. And it, it's it's very funny to me. I think I've done this with multiple Yakuza games, like what Charlie did. Like you get so invested for like maybe thirty, forty hours, and then you just burn yourself out. And then you're like, you take a, mm. I don't know, like a two week break or whatever. And then you're like, I, I want to go back and play it, but there's been so much time between when I last played it. And now I don't know what happened. So I'm just not going yeah, to. Yeah, that fucks me over real bad, too. That was the problem I had with Judgment, where I would play Judgment and do, like, a chapter and a bunch of side stuff, and then I would stop playing it, and I'd go, oh, I'll pick it up later, and I'd just get busy or kind of forget, and I'd come back <coughs> two, three weeks later and go, what the fuck is going on? Who's that guy? I hate, fuck this. I don't want to have to catch up every single time I'm done. Yeah. It's like you need a fucking anime recap each time you open the game. Something to, like... Yeah. Reacquaint you with the fucking story because there's just so many elements. <laughs> oh, uh, th this is a bit of a debate at the moment um, in the, in the community, if you will. I have been trying to fucking decide if I want to keep playing it in Japanese or if I want to play it in English. The only reason, the only reason why I would want to play it in um, Japanese is because Kiryu, the, one of the main characters of the Yakuza series, his voice is so iconic. Um, like, the Japanese voice actor is so iconic, and Fuck he nails yeah, the role is. so fucking well. Whereas, the, mm -hmm. per, the in the English dub, um, the rest of the English cast, I think, is fantastic. I think what the dubs in the Yakuza series and Judgment series are exceptionally good at this point. And... Uh, it's a shame though because Kiryu in the English dub. This is the first time Kiryu's got an English dub. It sounds it. It doesn't sound great. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Just so it's the second time. The it's the second time. Yeah, true. But it's the Gaiden. first time yeah. they hired. Yeah, they hired a. Uh, so the first time he got an English dub was Yakuza One, One on the PS2, yeah. and it was so bad they stopped doing dubs. Yep, it was it was god awful, and it had no star talent whatsoever except Mark Hamill was Majima, and it's literally just Mark Hamill doing the Joker voice, but for Majima. Hmm. Um, but everyone else in that dub is like just uh, kind of lower level, nothing. And in Like a Dragon, 
if you play it in English, Kiryu is voiced by the guy from the PS2 game. And it's like a cameo, because Kiryu's not in Like a Dragon much. He He's there, and he's important, but he's barely in the story. Um, so his voice is that PS2 voice actor, and it's kind of like a cute little wink and nod, like, ah, he came back, ha ha ha. But for Like a Dragon Gaiden and Infinite Wealth, they got a new voice actor. Is that Yang Ye? Is that him? Yeah, yeah. Young Ye. That was the big controversy because yes. he, a lot of people said they shouldn't have a YouTuber voice a major character like this, so a lot of people got really upset. I don't know, I haven't played it, so I don't know how he's done with the role, if it was like, I really like don't. He actually did a bad job, or people just blindly hating him. A lot on it of people don't they, like him, but I didn't play his Gaiden in English, so I didn't hear his performance. But I am playing Infinite Wealth in English, so I will hear his performance. Yeah, it's just. So we'll see. It's just. I think it's a miscast, honestly. I, I don't fault Young Yi over it. I don't think he, like. I don't know. I just don't think he had the voice for it. Like, when you when you look at all uh, Kiryu, he's, like, meant to be, like, a six year old character at this point. And the guy voicing him is like, I don't know how old he is, but he's much uh, younger than all the other voice cast in the game. So it just, mm -hmm. it doesn't have the same gravitas as the Japanese voice actor, uh, at the same impact. It doesn't sound, yes, doesn't sound as good. There's a lot of reasons for that. One big one is uh, the Japanese Kiryu voice actor is also a singer in a rock band. Mm. And Yakuza has a lot of places where that's relevant, especially karaoke, karaoke yeah. which has been a staple of the series for many, many games. And I don't believe Young is a singer. I, I could be corrected on that, but I think that's one reason that his karaoke performances were noted to be really bad by the fans. That was one of the big reasons they didn't like him. Um... But Jackson, we were talking in DMs a bit before the show about this, and you mentioned that this is in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler. The game takes place in Hawaii. Yeah. You eventually go to Hawaii, and you're playing in Japanese. Now, I'm playing in English, and you said you're tired of going around Hawaii and hearing nothing but voice actors speak terrible broken English <laughs> over and over again. Yeah. Why would you be tired of that? That's so charming. Yeah, no, I was no, going to no, no, ask, isn't that funny? Isn't that like adding to the experience? Isn't that great? It, it is funny to a degree except that it's done in a way where they'll speak so the cast members will speak uh english like all right for an exa for example there's a crooked cop during one of the sections and he speaks fluent perfect japanese like he's a white cop he speaks fluent <laughs> japanese to your cast members and then he'll turn around to his squad mates and he just talk the most broken english in a completely different voice actor as well like it, it's it's just it takes me out of it. It's goofy, but it takes me out of it as well. Now, isn't that being, hang on, isn't that being a bit hypocritical? Because when you play in English, that's the same thing for the Japanese characters. They're speaking English in Japan, which doesn't make sense. And also they're calling each other like Sachan and Ichiban-kun, which you wouldn't do in English. Yeah, but I, I, can get, I can get with that more just because I get more invested in English. <laughs> It's just easy if I <laughs> sure. No, I got that's fair. That's totally, um so that that's one reason I'm playing in English. I think maybe it's because I'm stupid and I just don't pay attention hard, but I understand the plots better when they're in English. I follow it a lot easier. And I think it's because I don't have to read what's going on. I can just listen to what's going on and watch it. Yeah. Do definitely. you feel that way? Yeah, a hundred I feel that way with any kind of sub versus dub debate. I I've always been like kind of on the side of dubs. Even though and this is strange, but even though I love I like I will watch most movies with subtitles on. So I'm fine with I've subtitles. Oh, we do, yeah. No. Yeah, I do. In case I've I miss too, in, ca in case I miss any information, in case the dialogue is like yep. mixed poorly or whatever, I want to make and, sure and that I get mixing, the information. Yes, it's the mixing, dude. I'm yeah. tired of watching TV shows and there's loud as fuck explosions and I have to turn my TV down and then I can't hear the dialogue and I'd rather just keep the volume lower and read subtitles to make sure I don't miss dialogue. Yeah. Fuck. It, everyone's getting fucked. so old. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been like that are. for a, I've been be like that for a long time. <laughs> You'll be there soon, Charlie. Don't worry. Yeah, what, are but you turning 45 this year? <laughs> yeah, getting close. <laughs> yeah, my point is, though, I don't have a problem with subs. It's just like with with these games, I just I would prefer to have the dub as well. And then the subs with the dub anyway, so I get the best of both worlds. Yeah. So If it makes you feel any better, the English cast is definitely oh, really, yeah. really good. I loved them. I loved all of them in 7. I didn't have any problems. If it, um, like I said, if it literally wasn't just for the Kiryu voice actor thing, I would have started yeah. the game in English because I played seven in English and yeah. the judgment, like voice acting and stuff, like they they do 
really good dubs at the moment with these games. So I didn't have any problem do. with that. It's just this one casting choice. So initially I played seven in English because one of the stars they got for it was George Takei. Oh, and I was like, oh shit, that's really interesting. I want to hear that. And then I ended up loving the English dub in seven. And I think a big part of it is I think the English voice actor for Ichiban so is good. better than the Japanese voice actor. Yeah, he's like the Japanese voice actor is good. I've, I've seen comparison videos. He is good. But I, I don't know. I think the English voice actor of Ichiban just fucking nails it he and fits his the personality he, perfectly. Yeah, he conveys the goofiness way more than the Japanese voice actor. 100%. Yes. He's way more over the top. He's way more silly. He I, I just really, really like his English voice, and I think because he's the main character and protagonist, I enjoyed hearing him for the whole game more than the Japanese voice actor, and that's one reason that sold me on English. Yeah. So you should try it. I th I still think it's very good. Oh, I'm one hundred. I, I think I'm going to go back to English. I was actually playing earlier with English, and I think I just prefer it more. I gotta get to where you are and hear Kiryu you in English and see how bad it is. Yeah. We'll find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think. If you if you've got the awareness of what Kiryu was like in the past, I think it's like it it does like immediately take me out of it. Like so, it just feels wrong. What what I'm hoping what I'm hoping is out there. There's a mod where everyone's yeah. in English except Kiryu. Yeah, I think so they're, they're just on all it. speaking perfect English. Yeah, they're speaking perfect English, and then Kiryu's just saying Japanese, and they understand him and reply <laughs> yeah. in English. I really want to see that. <laughs> Yeah, that that would be great, Andrew. I want to ask though. So you 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 play these in English? Yeah. Do you watch anime in dubs or subs? It depends on the anime. Um, if it's modern, I watch it dubbed because I think modern dubs are just as good. Like okay. they have real voice acting talent with good performances and all that. If it's old mostly sub unless the dub is very bad and funny yeah like yeah. interestingly funny and good yeah and that's, that's um the but mostly i try to do dub where i can just so i don't have to read subtitles like i i it's ironic i put on subtitles for movies so i can hear them but at the same time when i'm watching like tv and anime and shit i don't want to read subtitles yeah like i don't want to have to read it you know you want them there as an option i completely get that yeah Kaya, Ky yeah. are you an elitist with dubs or subs, or hmm. are you on our side as well with dubs? No, I don't care at all. I don't know if you remember, I used to watch a shit ton of South Korean dramas on Netflix, yeah, yeah. and I would always just watch them dubbed. I really don't care. I think the majority of the reason that people... I guess they are elitist, and also when you're watching anime in English and you actually hear it in your native tongue, you realize just how cringe and atrocious most of the writing actually is. Mm. Which doesn't, it's not as apparent when you're actually reading it, but when you actually hear somebody in English say all of that anime gobbledygook, it's like, oh, geez, am I really watching this trash? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely yeah. gotten a bit of that from these games. Something that um, I became self-aware of a while ago that hasn't left my head since is pay attention to when they scream attack names and just think about how fucking silly it is in concept. Like, who goes into a fight, and when they have a secret what? technique, they <laughs> scream the name of it as loud as they can so that people that's can always, that's always it and learn how to beat it. Yeah, that's all, it's, all, it's always been like that, though, and it's fucking, it's anime. Like, that's not, like, the biggest thing. It's like, well, if you really stop and think about it, this is su super un no, like, not no, practical of course. at all. That's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I became aware of it. It's like when you become aware of your breathing. Or when you become aware of how heavy your jaw is, you start to think about it and you go, wow, I never thought about this. Of course, the saying attacks is very silly, but lately I've just been thinking, oh my God, I never realized how just absolutely unnecessary it is. Oh fuck, I've been letting it go. <laughs> it's just it's just part of the charm. It's just some cheesiness to it. Like, yeah, I've said this for a while as well. If you just listen, like if you read the subtitles for an anime, it's not nearly as cringe, like Kaya said, but when you hear an American do like a one-to-one -one translation of it, if they just do it direct, it comes across terribly it just yes, doesn't sound can, as good it just it just I, can't i land can totally i can totally agree with you um for example hadouken in street fighter i think translates to like vacuum <laughs> wave or something and it's like the english name is is terrible but then you hear him say hadouken you're like oh fuck that's awesome vacuum you know wave <laughs> yeah. yeah he wouldn't fight a game and go vacuum wave vacuum, vacuum wave. wave like it'd just be stupid yeah oh, that, that would be cool wait so does that does that mean like japanese people when they're playing like street fighter and they hear hadouken over and over again they roll their eyes at that or do they like it see that's the funny part i think they like it they just like hadouken even if it literally means vacuum wave or whatever the fuck i know it means something silly mm. yeah 
And then, like, Sho Ryukin, I think, is, like, Rising Dragon Fist. Like, shit like that. Just yeah. goofy shit. All right, so just just to get uh, Charlie weighing in on the whole sub verse dub thing, just so no one uh, misses out on his opinion, what do you think, Charlie? <laughs> it's, uh, we've talked about it a lot. I always choose sub if it's available. Like, like if I really want to watch something the right way, I'll watch it subbed. Because if I hear it in the English dub, it's not nearly as hard hitting. But if I'm just watching mm-hmm. something for like the convenience of it, like to watch something before bed, I watch it dubbed. Like One Piece. Now, most people hate mm-hmm. the dub for One Piece. I've only watched it dubbed because it's convenient because I'm watching it when I'm in bed. I don't want to be reading mm-hmm. the subtitles while I'm laying in bed. But if yeah, I'm watching yeah. something that I really care about, like Attack on Titan, I've only watched it subbed. And I will only ever watch it subbed. Now, are there series where when people admit the dub is better, you go towards the dub? Yeah, but there's so, it's so rare. Yeah, Dragon Ball is the only one that comes to mind for the Cowboy dub being Bebop better. as well. I still haven't seen that, so yeah, maybe right there too. Oh, you should watch Cowboy Bebop. It's excellent. When you played through, when you started to play Judgment after I begged you to play it for so long, did you play it in English or did you play it in sub? Uh... I think I played it subbed. I played Like a Dragon in English, but I think I played Judgment subbed. Fair enough. I was just curious. I had to switch to... Uh, this is relevant to you, Jackson. I, when playing Judgment, had to switch to subbed from dubbed because the English voice actor for Yagami, the main character, is also a main uh, character yeah. in Like a Dragon and I just kept confusing the two, yeah, and it fucked with my brain. So I was like, okay, okay, he plays this one character, and then this guy's now Japanese, and that's it. That's how I'm going to solve this problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see. Yeah, they do reuse a lot of their cast members for stuff. Like, I know, I, I, isn't um, isn't Kasuga's voice actor in Japanese also Nishiki's voice actor or something like that, I think? He I might be, be. I could be wrong. He might be. Um, I've only ever played the Kasuga games in English, so I don't know. But I do know that they shuffle around the Jap- voice actors. The Japanese voice actor. I think the Japanese voice actor for Nishiki became Japanese voice actor for Ichiban. But I could be wrong. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. But I could see them doing that. All right, what, what else do we have? What do you want? We've got a lot on the Trello. Kai, you can pick. We got a buffet, Jackson. You, you go for it. I can pick. Uh, let's see. What do we have? The Oscars and Barbie drama. I don't really care. Has the, have any of you played more Pal World? I like Pal World a lot. Yeah, I play a lot of it. Eh. Yeah, I played a couple of hours with my friends, and it doesn't feel like Pokemon at all, so I don't know what the fuck Nintendo is going to be investigating here. They announced that they're looking into it. To, yeah. I don't know, I guess potentially start some legal action. Realistically, that means nothing because if they wanted to start legal I action, know. they'd have started legal action by now, you know? Well, they probably just want people to shut the fuck yeah, up about I agree. it. That is probably exactly probably, what it is. Yeah, where they're like, we get it. There us. it is. Yeah, yeah stop telling we us can't about, do anything it. We about it. We can't anything about it. We will love to, but we can't. Where did you guys, I'm, I'm assuming you talked about all the drama last week, um, but where did you guys get up to in terms of? If Power World ripped Pokemon off, do you guys believe that or not? No, it's just it's the it designs. Pokemon, so many of the, yeah, so many of the designs are just literally Pokemon, but well, it's a totally yeah. different it, game. It, yeah. It's a well, it's yeah. a one, it's just from what I played, I played for like maybe four hours, so I don't know, I didn't get too far in, but it feels to me like just a just a melting pot of all these different games. It's got like Ark in there. It is. Yeah, yeah it's it, rip off from it's, everything. It's yeah. Ark, and, Breath yeah. of the Wild, Elden Ring. It's, it's like everything. every big game of the last 10 years. Yeah. So I wasn't, I wasn't. And the thing is, it, it does look, it looks very, I don't know how to describe it. The game is enjoyable, even though it feels so soulless and like, it doesn't really have an identity that, that ties anything together. It really does feel like somebody just bought a bunch of assets and collected them into one game. But it's kind of fun still attacking the animals and just catching them and going through the wilderness. Is it a thing that's fun only with friends or is it a thing that's fun on the merits of its own gameplay? I don't think I would play it alone, no. I'm not a survival game guy, so it's really Mm -hmm. only fun for me with friends. But if you like survival games, it does everything well enough. Like I'm sure you could have a really good time playing solo. 
that's the hurdle I also hit. I put a couple hours in, and I just could not get over the survival game yeah. stuff. Like, I, it's probably good. I, I don't. I didn't hate it, but I don't think I'd put the time into it. It's not my kind of thing. Yeah, it's just not for me. I, I don't like survival games either. So, I, I yeah, I enjoyed playing it with my friend, but like looking at the core gameplay that I was actually doing, I just I, I wouldn't say that I enjoyed that aspect of it. I will say I am disappointed. I I really wanted a third person shooter with Pokemon or like a Pokemon RPG except with guns and a darker tone or it's it's not the game I wanted at all and that's fine it's very successful and people it is what people want the majority of the audience and all that but I don't know man imagine Max Payne and in the middle of a gunfight he's like go Charmander like I, I want to see that I want to see someone do that you know Oh, you they will. Definitely with the success of this, you're gonna see. Yeah, you're gonna see that. Oh, fuck yeah! I hope so. That's I'm optimistic. <laughs> I agree with it. They definitely overhyped the edge of it. I think in the marketing leading up to it, it's like you know, oh, you can capture Pokemon and even some of the humanoids and enslave them on your farm and make them whatever. And in reality, you just kind of you assign a Pokemon to water the flowers with this trunk. That's no, pretty you, much you it. Can, you, you can, can, you can make. Happy. I've seen you can make the po- the pals work on like factories and stuff like making the guns and stuff like that you can do that <clears throat> from what but the, I've the problem no, you is can, the trailer but it's not like... sorry i i think the trailer kind of oversold what it is while at the same time saying explicitly what it is so for example there's an iconic shot in the trailer where people kind of say oh it's <laughs> this kind of game where you see a bunch of the like Pikachu knockoffs or whatever it was working on the assembly line in the factory and they very deliberately shoot the shot so that the background is like, I think it's like lava in a volcano and it's very dark and red and ominous looking uh, contradicting the rest of the shots that are very bright and sunshine and outdoors and happiness and what a lot of people got um, initial glances from that trailer is oh my god you get to like liberate them from slavery and like that's Team Rocket's <laughs> Pokemon and they're putting them in finally like work camps like all this dark tone stuff and you're probably going to go in there guns blazing and rescue and blah blah and that's not the game that that is just someone built a base in a volcano yeah it's actually the opposite you're the one in, you're, you're the one enslaving them you're the and it, it's funny that you can use them as slavery. It is still a twist on the formula where you outright, you can literally catch pals that say work slave is their trait. And that got a good laugh out of me. But it's <laughs> not what a lot of people wanted, myself included. It's not this big, well-told adventure or really oh, yeah. investing world. You know, it's more just kind of, here's the pals. Here's what you can do. Have fun. Bye. And eh, that doesn't really win me over. Pretty much yeah, I, I think you're in the very small minority of people that this wouldn't win over, though, based on the success here. I feel like if yeah. it was that, it wouldn't nearly be as popular and it wouldn't nearly last as long. Yeah, survival games go hard. Yeah. I've admitted to this on the show many, yeah. many times. I am no longer the target audience for games and I have not been for years. I'm not a streamer. I'm not younger. I'm not into survival or grind type experiences. I, I don't mm. like any of that, you know? Yeah, that's fair. Um where that's the market that's changed that's what's popular now that's what sells that's what's been the big shit for the last five six seven years but what i enjoy playing like I, i'm at the point now for example like a dragon that game or infinite wealth to be specific that game's been out for a week now about give or take i just started playing it yesterday because i've had other shit to do and even then i only played for three hours and said okay that's enough for me you know, I'm I'm not like the majority of gaming now where they're spending six hours every single day playing their game, you know? And that's yeah. a big reason Pal World's not winning me over. I don't want to do all the survival stuff because to me it doesn't feel rewarding when I'm only playing for a couple hours at a time. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. That does yeah. make sense, for sure. Yeah, But it's still good. I don't mm-hmm. think it's a bad game from what I played. It looked fine. Do you guys, so do you guys not think that, we, we all agree that they clearly took um, Pokemon's designs for their pals. Do you not think that that uh, Nintendo or Game Freak has a right or a claim to their designs? No. I guess, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say for sure because like mm-hmm. uh, someone posted it in the chat a minute ago I saw. 
Dragon Quest has similar concepts to Pokemon concepts as well. Yep. As and so does um Tim Tim Digimon and so does Coromon, so does Digimon, yeah. So I don't know. Yo Kai Watch. Yeah, because then it'd have to extend to all the other things that have very similar looking designs. It's just Pal World has some that look extremely similar. Like yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I think I think so with I Dragon know. Quest, I think that they still go through I mean that that's definitely similarities, don't get me wrong, but I think they're way more unique than the ones in Power World. I think the Power World ones are very direct ripoffs, almost like Dragon Quest also models. predates Pokemon, as far as I know. I think the first few ones yeah, came out said before. said Dragon Quest came out first, so Nintendo actually stole the designs from Dragon yeah. Quest. Yeah, oh. Dragon Quest came out in like 89, 90, and Pokemon came out in 96. So if anything, Pokemon's ripping off Dragon Quest. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so wait, that means Power World's ripping off Dragon Quest instead. Holy shit. Every game's ripping off Dragon Quest, Jackson. It's fucking Dragon Quest. Literal, literally, Yakuza, yeah, like a dragon, true. rips off Dragon Quest, and that's the joke. That's the entire joke with you, with Ichiban's yeah. character yeah, it is. that he wants to be a Dragon Quest protagonist. It's all connected. It's all just Dragon Quest. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! So I've I've done a good handful of research on fair use and this copyright shit for my own channel, and the most conclusive thing I've found is that fair use is always uh, case by case. There is no strict definition anywhere, especially in the U.S., for ca for fair use. You have to kind of, like, judge it. It's a gray area. Is this or is this not? So if Nintendo hypothetically sues them, they could look at the pals and one judge could say, no, these are clearly just the same designs with a different coat of paint. This is not fair use. Whereas another could say, yeah, but they built a whole new world around it, a new lore. They rewrote all this stuff. They recolored them. They animated differently. It's also a different audience. Someone made a really good point. Yeah. Guns being introduced into the game immediately changes the target demographic it, that, that Pokemon is a very, goes for. That yeah, is a very good I, I argument because one I of the don't... biggest you one of the biggest uh, things that you want with fair use in the copyright is you don't want to conflate the original brand with the new one. That's a big thing that you often have to prove when doing parodies. You have to say no, no, no. People will not think that this is the original. They won't like get confused about that thing. It is fair use. It's totally different. And so with Power World, they probably have a good case by saying, look, there's guns in our game. No one's going to think this is a regular Pokemon game. I mean, ethically speaking, they are in the right. There is no, this is the same industry. Which CEO was it who recently said that gamers have to get used to not owning anything anymore? Ubisoft. Like if that's how it's going to be. Yeah, we don't have to defend any of these companies. Mm -hmm. Fuck Nintendo and fuck their copyright. This works yep. both ways. How about, how about companies don't own anything and you'll be happy? How about that? <laughs> that? People rip off their shit. <laughs> Fuck you. Ubisoft actually just did that recently with the crew. You know about that? Have you seen what's going on with no. that? Mm -mm. So the crew no. is a very big driving series. It's one, actually one of Ubisoft's biggest selling franchises. It, it's huge car game. And they released the crew too a while ago. I don't know how long ago, but a while ago. And the crew and the crew 2 were still going on, blah, blah, blah. And they are always online games. You have to be signed in to play them, even single player. And they recently announced that I believe at the end of this year, they are shutting the crew 1 down permanently. And it's a fully functional game that you can play single player, but because they made it online only... It does not work. If you own a disc of the game, you cannot play it. If you can no longer download it anywhere, if you have it downloaded somewhere, it will not play. And they dug into the code, and they found out that there's a flag that says, hey, enable offline mode. Let the game run fully without any online connectivity. But Ubisoft turned it off and encrypted it so hackers can't flip it back on. Oh, Jesus, what a bunch of douchebags. It's super, super scummy, and I, it's part of that I, whole thing. You will own, you will not I own your games. Zero, Fuck you. Zero sympathies. I hope more people violate their copyrights, and I hope they get away with it and make more money than the company themselves. If somebody else does your thing better than you, well, then fucking catch up. Do it better than they are. If it's really your material, then but wait, you said you guys, else you guys yourself you? said that they're not doing what Pokemon did. That's exactly why they're allowed to do this, in your opinion. They're not doing I'm saying hypothetically, Kai, Kai even if they saying, openly just, yeah. I, I genuinely don't give a shit. They could have actual Pikachu in there called Pikachu the Yellow Hamster from Pokemon, uh, registered <laughs> trademark with the little thing. <laughs> and I would still instead. say, leave them alone. 
<laughs> yeah. I don't give a fuck. I don't know. I I I don't agree with like I don't know. I don't agree with I don't agree with it. I don't agree with um two wrongs don't make a right basically. <laughs> like fuck Nintendo. I'm not upset over it. <laughs> I'm not hurt. I I'm not like going to go wage a war for Nintendo or anything. I just I don't like the precedent that it sets, definitely, with these kinds of games that are basically asset flips of now other games, uh, intellectual property. I don't like the precedent that it sets, but again, I, I get it. Like, fuck Nintendo, right? I don't, I don't really care, honestly. You think Power World is an asset flip of other games? Um, it's not directly an asset flip, but it's definitely a idea flip. And also they're, they're, so is pretty much everything this to an, like a, a larger degree. I don't think there's a whole lot of creativity in it. Not that that's a problem. A lot of games do fine with no creativity. So I don't think that's a problem. There, there are, I've seen conversations had where they say that models from Pokemon were directly used in creating the, uh, the flips of the PAL models in Power World. I'm not sure of the validity, validity though, so I don't know. It's like, it, mm -hmm. I, I saw modelers say, like, the vertices are so similar that it, it has to be, like, a direct rip from the models from the Pokemon games, which, if that's the case, then I think that is definitely... <laughs> and it, it's an asset flip in the simplest term. I, th I think you're mixing up the terms asset flip with cash grab. I mean, not in that sense. No, if that, no, no. Well, I, if in the sense that if I just, the models are taken, that, that would, yeah. If the models are taken, then he'd be right. Well, 100%. Yeah, if, yeah. Yeah. When you're specifically talking about them taking the models and redoing them, yeah. But I, I meant as a whole, where it has no high identity and it's doing what the other games are doing. Yeah, you know, could be, could be both. I guess. Again, I, again, I don't, I don't know if the validity to that. That's just what I saw. Model is talking about on Twitter, um, and if true, then I do think that's bad. But again, I, I don't know. I don't want, I, I'm not invested in this. I don't care really. I fuck Nintendo. That's, that's where I'll end it. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. You want to wrap on that note? That's a happy end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can call the episode fuck Nintendo. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Well, the first half was all about feet fetish, and then <laughs> yeah. the second half was Yakuza <laughs> Nintendo. People go in what expecting, a great episode. expecting Nintendo, and they'll get Chugga Conroy feet and <laughs> fucking drama. That'll be great. Can <laughs> a thumbnail be Pikachu sniffing feet? <laughs> That'll be our logo. Yeah, sure. Oh, Chugga Conroy is a Nintendo YouTuber, true. All right. <clears throat> That's going to do it for this episode. Um, thanks guys for watching this one patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus content we've also got content like the red thread as well as um, criminally stupid up on our youtube channel so you can check those out and they're on audio platforms go check out the entire category of shows under the official banner because I'm sure you'll enjoy it if you enjoy the official podcast at all they're a lot of fun um, mm -hmm. yeah other than that We'll see you next time, whenever that is. Bye. Yep. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.